yeah, strangely, it's it's you know it's it's part of our culture. It's been part of you know um, it's 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 a very tradition that's that's you know been there. Um, it just obviously was lost along the way. Um, our forefathers came here to South Africa, and um, things were kind of lost. And even in India, you know the the, the knowledge system sort of were, were lost. And um, slowly, these are now you know coming back and right. and reviving themselves, um, which is which is beautiful. Um, so yeah, it, it, sometimes we, we wish they were um, there earlier, but yeah, it, it's circumstances obviously that have led to, to knowledge um, being you know kept away from us. So Ayurveda is an ancient um, Indian medicine system, so it goes back some five thousand years ago. Um, and what it does is basically um, it looks at uh, healing the body from a uh, body, mind, and soul perspective. Welcome uh, to another episode of, of Zen and Now with me, Kishan Morar. And on today's episode, I have a very special guest, someone whom I've known since childhood days and uh, now a passionate Ayurvedic natural healing practitioner. Um, please help me welcome Anusha Baga. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Kishan. Um, thanks for the welcome. Um, yeah, you know, we've, it's been a long uh, time that we've known each other and um, to meet in this kind of ways, it's just so amazing that we can share, um, you know, our passion for, for helping people. 100%. I agree with you there. Life takes us on many journeys and uh, I'm just so glad that uh, we are able to, like, you know, give back from what uh, our experiences are and, you know, just try and help somebody else. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, let's get into, like, why did you just give me a little bit of your background and your, you know, your introduction into Ayurvedic practices, things like that. Okay. All right. Um, so my, you know, journey into Ayurveda, um, I'd say began quite some time ago, but um, sort of just solidified um, this knowledge that I've had um, very much recently. Um, you know, so when I left school, I did the traditional thing and went to study um, economics and finished my degree. Um, but I really knew that that's not what I wanted. Um, I actually wanted to study natural medicine at the time, which was in Cape Town. Um, so after finishing uh, university, I went to London, took a gap year, and um, it was kind of just my adventurous spirit that, that led me along that path. Um, but I also wasn't drawn into work, into the working world, into the corporate sector. It just wasn't a calling for me. Um, so yeah, working in London for a year, traveling a little bit, and um, coming back to South Africa, um, you know, and getting back again into the corporate world, I still wasn't kind of fulfilled and um, I knew that that just really wasn't what I wanted. Um, while I was in London, I think uh, I just opened up a whole um, sort of world into spirituality and uh, kind of found out that, you know, there's just a lot more beyond um, this physical world that we see um, and tapped into like sort of meditation practices and that kind of thing. And um, it wasn't really um, something that I, I really was practicing at the time or was very heavily involved in. Um, and so I, I came back to South Africa and just carried on loving, you know, the normal life and, um, you know, working and that kind of thing. But um, was, I was really drawn into, into, into the natural side of life and, um, you know, kind of healing my body um, from a natural perspective. Um, so into the corporate sector still for a while and um, the soul still just wasn't satisfied so I um, really then decided I, I needed to step out of this this, this you know setup and uh, went to work into the public sector because that really just felt like um, I could make a difference in, in some way because that's really what what was my soul is calling you know right, right. Um, trying to help trying to make a difference but it really still wasn't aligned um, with the spot that I'm on right now. Um, so working in the public sector and um, that's when I then realized, you know, I, I wanted to do sort of natural things and um, working with the body and, and in the energy, in the energy space. And so started doing some Reiki, crystal healing, right. um, working, you know, with, with angel links and stuff like that. Um, and then sort of like five or six years um, after coming back, I um, was just before my son was born. Um, I sort of my guru came into into my life, um, and I think that's just when my um, spiritual path kind of you know catapulted, and um, it just brought me deeper into into my calling. 
And uh, that's when, um, so when my son was born, um, you know, I, I started looking into ways of how I can help him, you know, when, when they're little, there's always, you know, little things that they, they're growing up with, you know, like running noses and, um, you know, just childhood, you know, slow right, illnesses. Right. Um, how could I then help him better um, stay healthier? And so I would always look at the alternative way of doing things and never would go to a pediatrician. I, I don't think either of my sons went to a pediatrician oh, wow. more than twice. <laughs> um, because I, I just really, you know, was listening to myself, listening right. to um, to their bodies and knew if it was really extreme, then I would take them to a doctor. Um, I think we will be trapped so much in the sphere of 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 of, of the external world um, that we we very scared to listen to ourselves. Right. Um, so yeah, so I, so I started looking into that, and um, then when my second son was born, um, it's, it's sort of the same thing again, and had all this little bits of knowledge, you know, that I gained over Google and, and that kind of thing. Um, and also needed to just help myself in the process of having these two little boys, right. um, you know, it just, just gain some balance into my life. And that's when I then um, looked into Ayurveda and uh, decided to do a course in that and take my studies further, um, went on to India to, to do some practical training as well. So that was how my journey into Ayurveda and, um, and energy healing sort of, you know, brought me to where I am today. Uh, that's really impressive, like how you you were able to like find your calling like, very very early on in your in your life. I don't think a lot of people actually you know get to have that experience, and um, you actually now you know following your passion, uh, which is amazing in itself in its in itself. Because I think you've you've tried different things. You've seen like what the corporate life is and what you felt like um, a natural. You wanted to be a natural healer, and you just listened to yourself uh, and just went with it. And you know, you've, I don't think you, I don't think you have any regrets of of not going one one path. Whereas if now you you're just following your own path and you're feeling you feel good about it and you feel like this is where I need to be in life. Yes, yes. Um, you know, I think it's so important that that we we on our voices and and on our um, our calling. Um, it may not be a direct path. It may not be something that's going to lead you in, in in a year's time to where you exactly want to be. Um, but just having that that vision and having that in your heart, um, you know that this is the way I want to go eventually, or this is the way I want to be. Um, you you will get there. And setting your 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 you know just your mindset um, and telling us reminding yourself every day of what that purpose is. Right. Um, it really just helps you. I mean, it, it hasn't been a linear journey for me um, and, you know, just an upward trajectory. Right. Um, there's been many, uh, you know, ups and downs along the way and there's, there's many waves that you keep on having to riding um, to, to get to where you want to be. So um, it's, it's just a matter of, you know, keeping your, your focus, coming up when, you, when you're in those oh, lows, yeah. in the moments of lows, and just honoring yourself um, throughout that and giving your, 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 yourself the space that you need um, in those times of lows and, 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 right. and also appreciating the highs sometimes that come with it because sometimes Celebrate we, the um, highs. We, 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 we always get stuck on the low sides of, yeah. of life and then we never tend to um, celebrate ourselves and the achievements um, that, that, that we have um, gained throughout the, this journey. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, you make a very important point is to we need to also celebrate the moments that bring us joy and happiness. Uh, exactly. Sometimes they say, okay, don't over celebrate. It's you know, keep your keep your feet on the ground, and yeah. But I think in that moment, you gotta celebrate that that moment of joy and happiness, and, and you know that exuberance of like I've achieved something. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It's not it's it's a short term, you know, uh, dopamine release, but it's, yeah. it's it has to be experienced for you to actually acknowledge the fact that I've achieved something, and then you move on to the next thing. But it you have we like, you know, f for so long we've been told that. You know, don't get ahead of yourself. Don't get, mm -hmm. you know, don't think as, oh, now you've done something, it's done. You know, um, we've always been told, like, stay focused. Don't look too far ahead, like I said. And yeah. just be like, don't be like, I don't know what's the word I'm looking for. It's trying to, like, uh, if you're going to like, yeah, sort of over, yeah, over yeah, expect, yeah, um, yeah. You, yeah. hundred uh, percent. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But I feel like in this point in time, I celebrate those moments of victory mm -hmm. uh, because that's what life is about. I mean, yeah, we focus on the negatives that we, where we want to improve, but also 
look at what we've what we've achieved as well yes yeah that's just so important yeah 100 percent. so your ayurvedic practice uh for those who don't understand what ayurveda is can you give us just a background or just a brief explanation into what what this practice is okay so ayurveda is an ancient um, indian medicine system so it goes back some five thousand years ago um, and what it does is basically um, it looks at uh, healing the body from a body mind and soul perspective so it's not just this physical body but incorporating healing from um, the soul level from an energy level because this body is just not this physical body that we see um, but there are really different layers that that um, that surround this body um, and so you know, t tapping into all those layers of ourselves and healing it um, throughout and uh, getting into the root cause of, of, of what um, the illness is, what the, the issue is that, that you're experiencing, whether it's a mental issue, whether it's a physical issue, um, but understanding what the root is and how, um, how, you, how we can help you from there. Also to know that, um, you know, that uh, each of us is, is an individual, um, we're, we're just... Um, uh, we, we're unique, and um, so it, there's just not one approach to healing um, for everybody, but each one has uh, a unique blueprint, and so each one's going to be treated in a very unique way um, so that you can be you, you can actually um, heal in, you know in, in, in that kind of way. Right. So I'm, I'm a newbie to Ayurveda. I come to you and I say, okay, um, I'm struggling with you know a little bit of anxiety. You know, a, little, a little bit of uh, you know pressure you know in life and stuff yeah um, just from a, just a basic you know practitioner how would you begin like that that journey of mine just trying to get into Ayurveda and okay. what what were the what will the benefits be for me okay so um like I said to you each one is unique um and I think what I should have also mentioned is that uh, when you when you come to understand Ayurveda, you also know that we're all made up of um, five elements, right? So we're made up of your air, your ether, your fire, water, and your earth. Um, so some of us may be having um, one element more than the other, and this makes up your right. doshas, which is known as vata, pitta, and kapha. Okay. And so when these elements get out of balance, um, so I'm not going to go into 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 Vata, Pitta, Kapha, but just talk about the elements. Right. And so when the, when these elements go out of balance, that's when certain illnesses are are prone to to, to come through. So when we're looking at anxiety, when we're looking at that kind of thing, um, if you think of anxiety, it's just really um, around the mind and. And um, so, so when you think of, of, of that, you're thinking of um, the lightness and the airiness that comes with um, with that kind of you know um, sort of symptoms, right? right. Um, and so, what happens is there's there's a sort of um, imbalance in in the vata dosha. Okay, um, and so 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 that then obviously has to be treated from from that perspective. But it's also about understanding your um, digestion. Okay, right. um, and understanding that um, we uh, everything centers around our digestion. Okay, um, and so over time, what uh, what we eat and the, the foods that the, that we consume, um, how is that getting digested? Um, and uh, there's also a buildup of toxins as, as as time goes on in our systems, um, and that that then eventually starts seeping into the, the tissues of our body. Um, so the, the tissues of our body then obviously get um, sort of uh, infiltrated with the with the toxins, and then that obviously then um, you know causes stagnation and 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 these other issues then start building up. So right. it's how about how to treat the, how to treat the the, the the digestion and getting that into um, into balance and then obviously treating um, the, the toxins that are, that are in, in the system and allowing that to come out um, so that you can actually then start having a more balanced um, being. Right, right. Okay. So it's basically Ayurveda is just trying to bring balance back to yourself. Yes. You've so been it's out, being, you've been out, out aligned. So just yeah, so it's basically alignment. bringing all these elements back into alignment. alignment. Um, okay. So like, like I'm saying, each of us is born with, um, with a particular kind of, of, of element that's predominant. Um, and that's called our prakriti, right? Um, and so when these elements go off, off balance, we're then into a vikriti state. Um, so maybe at some point you're born, so you basically say maybe born with a vata, pitta, um, prakriti. So um, that would be more 
fire, more um, air, more ether, that kind of um, elements. Uh, but say over time, you maybe through seasonal changes, um, through lifestyle, through the food you're eating, um, you sort of develop more um, more fire element in you, right? So that's now there's really this this build up of heat in your system, and so you're now getting into a very pitta uh, vikrati. And so now, how to bring that back into balance? So it's um, try to 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 eliminate that fire, reducing the fire fire element in your body, so that you can slowly come back to your balance of your vata pitta. So and and like you said, you mentioned diet comes into into that practice. Yeah. Um, yeah. So do you like? give examples or do you give like advice on what to like or do you ask the your your clients like okay what's your diet looking like and then you take it from there of what you think is causing the issue and then try yeah. to replace it with something a bit more healthier or a bit more suitable for that person yeah so um exactly like um like i mentioned about the elements every food item um everything around us is made up of these five elements um so every item would would food item would actually either um, have an effect on a vata pitta or kapha dosha um so it's understanding what what the client is eating um just to see where the imbalances are and then obviously then trying to um to bring them back to to their natural state um by obviously eliminating certain foods um you know giving them certain other foods to to improving that to including their diet um certain spices and also to know that um ayurveda really um, talks about a six days diet okay so it's um it's consuming six different tastes in your in your meal and um if you go back to the way our our grandparents grew up right. it they kind of had that six tastes in their meal because uh, most of the time they would have um your roti um your vegetable um your dal your rice um and a pickle with some you know papar or whatever it was yeah. so they really did have the six tastes on their plate and um, so the six tastes are your sweet your sour your bitter um your um your your pungent um and your astringent so those tastes are incorporated in in, in that kind of in that right. plate um but over time we've sort of um, moved away from from eating that you know traditional it doesn't have to be an indian meal right. uh, but we've sort of moved away from from that kind of 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 eating pattern um consuming more processed foods consuming more fast foods um right. just quick and easy meals because of the lifestyle that we're living um, because of of the pressures of of the external world, right. that we forget about um, how to go back to to eating with uh, the seasons, eating um, for our body, um, right. and 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 that kind of thing. So so diet is really just a very important part of an aspect of of I of, of the journey. So I guess that also comes back to like where the energy comes from, like because food gives you energy. It's like our. Yeah. It's like your 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 petrol for your yeah. car. It, it, yeah. It so I mean, from... food is it's the prana, you know, the life force, and that that get, goes back again to eating fresh foods. Um, yeah. You know, eating of like okay, all of us can't eat organic foods, um, but eating f- foods that are really fresh and, and not processed, not frozen, um, you know, it's 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 just so important. Do you? Yeah, I think I find it it's kind of tough nowadays to actually find that fresh produce, you know, mm-hmm. um, because yeah. like you said, like the world is is moving so fast people just want a quick and easy thing um like myself we try and like go to the market every second every second saturday you know just to the farmers market and get yeah. the fresh produce from the actual farmers uh, yeah. and we we realize those last longer than actually the ones yeah. you buy in store uh, and they're much more healthier they taste better you know True. your food even has that 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 punch that it needs you know and you enjoy the meal, but you're also getting the nutrients again from the fresh produce. Yeah. So I yeah. think we have to like it's it's kind of a tricky balance. It depends where you are in your life in your life. Like if you like you just on the go 24-7, you obviously like you said, you're just gonna consume something that's quick and easy. But if you have if you find the time to like actually make a healthy meal, sit down, you know, and enjoy the meal, uh, you feel a little better, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, um, you said you said something so important. Um, is there someone is on the go and they're just gonna look for something quick and easy? But I think what we forget is you can be on the go, but um, planning is so important. Mm. Um, and I think if you just spend like five minutes or ten minutes 
in on a Sunday or the week, you know, which whenever your week is, is you're planning your week, um, just to plan your meals so that you know this is what am I going to be eating, um, this is what I'm preparing for the week for breakfast, right. lunch, dinner, um, and that on the go can still kind of work if you just make the time to to prepare and um, know the, the the food that's going into your body. Yeah, but that also has to be uh, taught really young, right? Um, yes. But to make it a little bit of, I know in the, in your elderly in your your latter stages of your life, I mean, you kind of like have to like just wander into that space and make sure that this is good for your ways. Like I think when you're like a bit younger and you have those values and practices instilled in you very young, you know, you just carry that into you. You might not yeah. practice it every day, you know, yeah. because life is not like 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 you said, it's not linear. It's 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 very up and down. Um, but you have that sense of of just of practice to say okay i have been doing this for for a very long time and it, it it suited me well you know it worked for my body i was i was really healthy and you go back to that state some point yeah. because you have that installed in you um like you said fast paced life doesn't mean you don't have you can you can't eat healthy you can yeah you can yeah. get the nutrients that you require and i think nowadays they are people are trying to get to that stage where they even on the go they like having their their mm-hmm the fruits, vegetables, or just the different elements, like you said, yeah. uh, into their diet. Even though they are on the go, they try. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. yeah it's, it's so important. And, and I think another aspect is just, um, you know, being mindful where you eat. Mm-hmm. Um, so a little bit of a gratitude player before you start your meal, um, just bring so much more meaning, meaningful, um, meaningfulness to to your plate of food and um, to the source, to where it came from, and just appreciating every element on that plate. And from the farmer that planted it to right. the person that you know packaged into the grocery store, um, to how it got to your plate, it's it's we we, we forget that whole value chain, um, which is so important. Gratitude. And um, appreciating every person um, on, on in that in that chain, <laughs> you know. So funny so, you say that <laughs> because. Uh, about a year or two now, Dejel and I have introduced a prayer before we eat, you know, just to thank uh, the person who prepared the meal. Yeah. We thank we thank God for, like, giving us this plate of, you know, food to eat. And yeah. we just pray for everybody that's in our families and, you know, that knows us. And we just, you know, those that are less fortunate as well, you know, yeah. please, please guide those that are less fortunate. And it's so, like, important to, just to give a little bit of, you know, yes. you know yeah. essence to, yeah. the, to the plate of or gratitude, like you said. And it's also sending that energy to your food, so the energy is entering your body. Yeah. Um, there's just so much that goes with it. <laughs> yeah. It's it's not just the gratitude. Um, it's just that essence that that, right. that that you know sort of nectar that gets into the food that now is entering your body. Right. Yeah. So, as we live in a modern world, like, uh, and Ayurveda is 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 it's not something that somebody would actually like go and practice straight off the mm-hmm. bat. Do you, what are the, what kind of challenges as a practitioner do you think that Ayurveda as a as a holistic approach uh, faces mm-hmm. in this day and age? Yeah, so I think um, the first thing is you know when people look for um, healing or any sort of you know a way of of improving their life, they're always thinking very um, like instantaneous because of of the world. We, yeah. Yes, because yeah. the world we're living in is, is so instant and everything is instant yeah, yeah. gratification. <laughs> Um, so when people um, step into this, um, you, you kind of have to remind them that this is a journey and um, we've set ourselves to, to get to this point. Um, so we've kind of brought along a lot of these illnesses upon ourselves um, unknowingly. And so it's kind of not just erasing it immediately, um, but it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a journey and um, you need to be patient with yourself. And um, so I think sometimes people kind of don't have the patience um, and they, they look for immediate results. Um, so that's that's some, something that, that obviously needs to, for people to understand um, that that this body is, is a journey to be worked on. It's, you right. know, there's this constant improvement that, that happens. Um, and it's you, you, you will see results, um, but you also need to be dedicated to your journey. Um, it's <laughs> yes, not like the doctor that's going to give you the pill and um, you're going to get fixed instantly, uh, but that's just treating it on a very symptomatic level um, and not treating you on a root, a root cause root level. Cause, yes. um, 
whereas Ayurveda is looking at, at the root cause and um, help trying to help you understand your root causes. But you're also the healer on in, in that. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not just uh, helping you, but you're helping yourself and you are the healer of your body. And um, so you obviously need to also take control in, in, that, in that process. Um, so the, that's the that's the one thing that you know you you obviously see, and then um, the other thing is obviously uh, you know the the, the sort of um, the, the the practices that that people don't know about, um, and and then obviously you have to learn about these kind of practices like simple you know daily routine kind of practices that that they're not used to. Um, but you know, if 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 one's committed to their journey and, and one's committed to healing, um, yeah. it's it's a beautiful experience. Yeah, you make a very important point. It's not <clears throat> it's not just a practitioner that's there to help you. <clears throat> Excuse me. The, the I think eighty percent is is the onus is on you. Yes. Twenty percent is the practitioner because they'll give you the guidance and the tools. Yeah. It's actually like like you in school, you know. The teacher yeah. will give you so much, but it's you, it's on the onus is on you to go and do the homework and learn. Like yes. I need to practice, 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 practice. And it's I think that's where I think we fall short, where we don't stick with it. You know, we'll do it for a little, say a month or two, like, and then yeah. we, we forget about it. You know, yeah. but like it's a constant, uh, it's a constant practice. Yeah. It's the constant, you know, being mindfulness or, or being being mindful that I'm on a journey, and some days are not going to be the same. And, yeah. But we shouldn't give up. That's the thing. Just yeah. continue with your practice, even if it's if it's stagnant for a little while. Come back to it. But you know that this journey is is going to be like throughout your lifetime. Actually, it's not going to be yes. something that's a, it's overnight. It's actually it's, yeah. It's actually just a way of life. You know, yeah. um, it's just a, it's a way of living, and um, it sort of then just becomes a part of you that you don't have to to tell yourself, oh, okay, this is um, Ayurveda. But it just becomes a part of your lifestyle. It comes a part of your daily living. Um, and everything around you, um, because it's 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 basically, you know, takes in into into account all the things around us. So it's it's really just a way of life. Yeah, but just like how I think, just like as we 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 get uh, we get we create bad habits, we can also create good habits. You know? Yeah, I think yeah. we forget that it's not only about just having a bad habit and sticking. That's it. You know, like. They say 21 days, you know, the magic 21 yes. number yeah. to create a new habit. Yeah. Um, so we can, we, also can, we can redirect our thought process to become a little bit more mindful that, yeah, we, we can have negative experiences, but also we can have positive, uh, positive practices as well, which they balance each other out because you can't just have more of the other. It just, yeah. it just doesn't align. And then you get frustrated with yourself and you're like, I don't know why I'm doing this. You know, it's it's not even helping me, and I just get you get frustrated, you get angry, you feel you feel all mm -hmm. those all those emotions mm -hmm. that you you trying to actually like you know limit. Not you can't mm -hmm. you'll never, never get rid of them because it's part yeah. of your makeup. I mean, we human beings, we emotional. We have we experience. I think they, every emotion like every single day. It's just yeah. how how, we how you see. It. It. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think with with introducing, like you said, introducing these kind of practices into your life, it becomes second nature to your, to your, to your life. And you're like, you'll see the difference. It might not be when you want to see it, but mm -hmm. it, it'll, it'll come. You just have yeah. to stick with it. Yeah. You just have to keep, keep grinding and, and keep pushing. Yeah, no, it is. Um, and you know what, it's like I said to you, it's, it's not just, um, the food it's, it's there's so much around it um it's about taking care of your energy body taking care of your mental body um your thoughts you know all of those kind of things um right. and right. and all of that is is deals with exactly with what you spoke about right and in terms of like daily practices like will you be able to share with us like your personal practice um like how do you get into routine and how have you incorporated ayurveda into your daily life and into your family's life yeah. Okay. So, um, you know, when I was younger, um, I, I kind of struggled a little bit with, um, with social anxiety and that kind of thing and kind of only figured that out quite sort of later in my life. Um, and so that's really how also another reason why I, um, I went into this Ayurvedic, this, this, this pathway. Um, 
so for me when when i when i um when my guru entered in and in, came into my life um i was then you know practicing my sadhana and doing my, my my daily meditation um you know throughout and doing lots of um kriyas and, and, and pranayams um and so that that has kind of stuck with me um throughout and obviously there are times when you when you like you said you know you you go a little bit off balance and life happens um but for me, my daily practices, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I really do wake up early in the morning. And the reason why I actually wake up early in the morning is because I have the time then um, to myself right. um, before the rest of the house wakes up. So I know that I, I'm getting some peace and quiet. I, I can, I, I'm able to, to actually do my meditation, do my sadhana, do my pranayams in a very peaceful, peaceful way. But um, it's also just waking up with the sunrise and it's just such a beautiful thing. Um, when you're sitting in front of, of the sunrise and right. uh, in, well, even when it's a little dark and, and you're seeing the sun come up, um, there's just that energy that, you know, that comes with it. And in, in, in Ayurveda, in the Vedic text, it's called um, Brahma Murat, which is actually like from four o'clock to six o'clock in the right, morning. Right. Um, and so mm-hmm. that, that time space um, just really allows you to go within and um, you know, you, you, you can do so much more of that introspection at that time of the morning. Um, so that's really what I do in the morning. Um, I also do a lot of um, journaling um, to allow myself to just let out my thoughts and, right. and emotions when, when I'm feeling down. Or um, and, and like we see, we spoke about earlier, it's not just really feeling down. <laughs> I realized that I needed to journal also when I'm feeling a little, good. Yes. You know, good day some days. Yeah. Um, so, the, so the journaling really just helps you on a mental level and an emotional level to process so much of um, things that are within us and, and, and that's on our mind. Um, the other things that I, that I obviously incorporate is yoga and um, walking. Um, so for me, those are like walking is kind of a non-negotiable thing. You know, I I try and I, I try and walk um, as often as I can um, during the week, um, and you know, do yoga practices as well. Um, and yeah, so so that that that's my 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 daily kind of ritual morning routine. Um, and how I've incorporated that with my family is, um, you know, the boys are, are a little bit young, but um, in, incorporating simple like gratitude practices, um, you know, at bedtime, um, doing some of you know breathing and breath work just to to, to ground them, just to center them. Um, right. And uh, you know to to help balance the nervous system. You know they they out and about all the time. They um, hyperactive. They they boys. They and you know they you know school going kids are always yeah. um, you know busy. Um, and, yeah. So <laughs> so you, so you really do need to bring that element of, um, of 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 breathing and you know getting in touch with your own body. Um, it's just just you know connecting. And it doesn't have to be anything hectic, but just simple you know, breathing techniques for kids. Um, it just does so much to them. It allows them to sleep so much better as well right. at night. Yeah. Um, and also daily massages. So, you know, doing oh, wow. daily massages. Um, if you can't do it daily, and, and that's okay. Like I always say to people, you know, you we can't do things seven days a week, um, you know, 365 days a year. But um, as often as you can, and at least you try, and at least you, you're getting into that practice of, of self-love and um, nurturing your body and taking care of yourself. Um, so in Ayurveda, there's something called Abhyanga, and Abhyanga is really just self-massage, um, and so it's oiling the body and uh, showing yourself the love, uh, you know. So yeah, so so those are the kind of practices that that I incorporate um, on a on a daily basis. Yeah, I I have I think I have a like a similar um, similar routine in the morning. Um, normally wake up. Uh, so I have an app, an app on my phone, just a mindful app. Uh, yeah. So I just to check my level of anxiety for the morning, and whatever's in my mind, I'll just like, like I'll see the level of anxiety I am, and then and then just make a note of it. So I know I'm taking it out of my mind and putting it. You know, I might not have a journal close to me, but that's my morning yeah. routine every day. It's yeah. just like something that's, a lot like a, if I if I miss out on it, then I'll feel like okay, I have to I have to get back. Yeah. To it. Yeah. Um, and then wake up because I'm like a morning person. I'm that's when I have my my boost my boost of energy. It's just I've always been like that. I think growing up, my my dad used to be up early, and we were up early with yeah. him. So that stuck with us. So I just think like morning for me is just like getting my uh, getting my exercise done early in the morning. So I know I'm that's when I have the most energy. Uh, getting that done, 
settling down after that, showering and go to work, you know, then I know I'm mm -hmm. done. That my practice for the morning that that yeah. gets me going is done. Whereas sometimes you're like, okay, I'm just gonna take a break today. And you maybe do it a little later, but yeah, it doesn't have that that same effect Picked. when yeah. you have your your practice in the in morning. The morning. Mm -hmm. Because I think I agree. when the sun rises, like you you I rise we rise with the sun. You know, yeah. as soon as the first light hits you, you, you're up, you know. Yeah, and I mean, it, it gives you that sort of different kind of energy feel. Um, and so, you know, in, in Ayurveda, the, the, the times of the day also um, are related to a particular dosha. And so um, from 6 to 10 in the morning, um, it's actually kapha dosha. So if you're going to rise a little later, kapha dosha is really the water and the earth element. Mm. So it's kind of this really heavy heaviness around it. Um, so if you wake up like from 6 to 10 and that, that's like sort of the later part of the morning, you generally have that sort of lethargy around you. Um, and you know, if you have a second sleep, you, you're generally always waking up tired. Yeah. Um, so that's why it's also actually better to, to rise with the sun and, and wake up. Um, with the sun to, to to beat that that sort of heaviness um, yeah. that comes with the kapha dosha. Look, I mean, not everyone is the same. Like some people, yeah. some people, yeah. like you said, kapha and dosha is at a different time of the day. Uh, it's just how they are, and we have to also respect that they also have their times of days where they where they start their their routines. And I think it's just about accepting that not everybody is the same and like you said the ayurvedic practice i think as a practitioner you have to it's i think it's a challenge for you to like not it's not just a a, a once off uh, or, or a set practice you got to be yeah. also a little bit flexible in your in how you approach different people and um you made a, a important point about like self massage and uh, nowadays we you know we have those foam rollers and we have those you know massage, uh, mm -hmm. massage guns or even yeah. just a I, it's so funny enough, like I struggle with my back um, for a very long time. And sometimes it just gets a bit knotted and everything. And now I just take a simple, a bouncing ball. You know those bouncing balls? Like, yes, like, yes. And I put it against the wall because it's hard. And it, yeah, like, yeah. you know, manipulate the, the muscle. Yeah. And it's lisas, eh? Like it's, it's, it's so amazing. Like we use a, a piece of, of nostalgic, uh, you know, uh, a toy or entertainment a toy. Toy. Yeah, yeah 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 you know to relieve tension in your uh, in your body yeah so i think we can find we don't have to go have like a super expensive exactly uh, it's it's just simple things that you have at home um it's not you know buying anything out of the ordinary it's using your hands um mm -hmm. you know it's it's really nothing you don't actually need anything you just always need a little oil um but yeah using your hands to 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 to, to give you the massage yeah i wish we could have it every day now but uh you know, as babies, we grow, we grow up, we get a massage every day. You know, mom helps you out before you sleep. It helps, it helps you sleep better. No, it definitely does. And that's why it's so important, um, you know, for kids as well, before bed, just to give them a massage. It's grounding them, um, you know, just helping the nervous systems relax and, you know, just giving them a good sleep. I love that you're incorporating breath work into the early years. Uh, it's so important, like you said, like we say, fundamental years are from zero to seven. And if they learn those techniques in life, it's just going to give them a, a better, yeah. a better tool and uh, give them the, the ability to, to manage stressful situations, you know, more yeah. calmly. I mean, they, they don't always, um, no, I mean like, you know, it, they, it's, they, it's they important to, with, yeah. no, I understand. They, like, I wish we had that, that practice. <laughs> yeah. I've been in school. I wish we had like, you know, just a 10, 15 yeah. minute uh, break between our classes, you know, just to go in because you're going from one subject yeah. to the other and it's just like, your mind is so busy 24-7, there's no time to relax. Mm -hmm. Only we had break time, you know, we had those breaks. But we were just like rushing to a class and we didn't have that time to just to settle ourselves and just go into the next class and, you know, focus. I think it, it would help, you know, just those that are, those can manage those 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 mm -hmm. stressful and, uh, experiences. And there's some that just need about like 10, 15 minutes just to center themselves. Yeah. And we shouldn't be, I don't think it should be, you know, we used to get like late for class and, like, you know, you get... Yeah. Oh, you can't come inside now, you know? Yeah. But, it, yeah. <laughs> but you know, I think it also boils down to to the teachers and um, their yeah. states of mind. And if, if teachers are not in, in control of their, their, their body and their mind, right. um, it's so difficult then to, to help a child. Right. Um, right. Because you, you you obviously need to be so much more centered, so much more grounded to be able to to respond better um, to, to children. And, um, you know, children are so unique and so different. 
Um, and so dealing with like, you know, however many kids in a class, it's, it, it, it's, it's difficult for the teacher if they're not in, right. in, in their space of mind, right space of mind. Yeah, that's a very important point. It's actually they're the drivers of the, of the ship. Yeah. So if, yeah. The, if the captain yeah. is not calm, uh, the, the boat is going to Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, you make uh, this breathwork is just so important. I think in this day and age, it's even though we've learning it in our adult life, uh, we can pass it on to the next generation. To yeah, help and, them and strangely, it's it's you know it's it's part of our culture. It's been part of you know um, it's 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 a very tradition that's that's you know been there. Um, it just obviously was lost along the way. Um, our forefathers came here to South Africa, and um, things were kind of lost, and even in India. You know the, the the knowledge system sort of were, were lost, and um, slowly these are now you know coming back and right. and reviving themselves, um, which is which is beautiful. Um, so yeah, it, it, sometimes we we wish they were um, the earlier, but yeah, it, it's circumstances obviously that have led to to knowledge um, being you know kept away from us. Yeah, uh, systems that have kept knowledge away from us. Yeah, um, like life, it comes full circles. It's up and now it'll come so, again. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think now with the introduction of technology as well, we we need it more than ever. Yeah. And the, and the availability of information where, where we consume so much and digital, you know, in the digital space. Um, I remember like we didn't have like that. Our digital space was the library. Walk into the library, yeah. you know, extension three <laughs> <laughs> library. Yeah. On a Friday afternoon, going to get a a book, you know, with your library card and yeah, home, yeah. And, that was our, you know, or going to the getting True. Like encyclopedias yeah. and encyclopedias. Yeah. yeah, I mean that, that knowledge for us, and it's just amazing how um, over the decades things have just, yeah, yeah, changed. it's such your fingertips now. I think we have to. Yeah, we can't we can't not acknowledge it. It's there. We just have to ex like manage it in a way where we're not like over uh, over stimulating our brains. Yeah, uh, yeah, because the brain also is like it's. I mean, it's the most important muscle of your body. Yeah, it drives everything. Yeah, without it being healthy, we, yeah. we just we just giving our we shortfalling ourselves basically. And I think that you know also comes down to the point of um, our sort of um, how we set boundaries for ourselves. You know, um, like you know, sleeping whether we were looking at the phone before we're going to bed, how much we're consuming. Um, you know, creating filters within ourselves um, about the type of content that content, we consume. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because the type of content that's available is just uh, amazing, you know, from a variety of, 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 of information sources. And it's about how you filter this information yeah. um, so, that, and so that how it enters your subconscious mind and how you then dealing with it. Um, because yeah. it, it has such an effect on, on not just the mind, but on the body as well. Um, you know, creating all those um, fear, creating anxiety, um, creating anger, and uh, sometimes we're just not aware of, of the content and, yep. and how it then um, affects our, our our body and our mind. Right. Yeah. yeah like you said, it's, it's we, we have a choice of what we can consume yeah. and yeah. how much of it we want to consume. I think. Yeah. So, and then like the future of of Ayurveda, like do you see it? You see a lot more of it in in the more. Do you see it, or do you hear more about it talked about and more about it being discussed and more people like now actually looking to to start their Ayurvedic journeys? Absolutely. Um, I think it's it's really just growing and um, there's just this you know there's so much of information about our Vedic systems and our Vedic culture um, from whether it's astrology to um, to, to Sanskrit, to uh, you know Ayurveda, to yoga, and there's just so much of this that's come out, and it's not just in in Eastern world, but in the Western world as well, um, where people are just hungry to consume this kind of mm. knowledge, and um, drinking it because of, of of the benefits that they see um, from it, and um, so I I really do see Ayurveda growing, and um, just the, in, in, from a holistic perspective, like holistic healing in general, uh, whether it's traditional Chinese medicine. Um, or you know, like the homeopathy or, or, or that kind of thing. Um, there's there's just an uptake of people trying to to heal their bodies, trying to um, understand themselves better from a from a wholeness perspective, from a whole being, um, rather than treating symptoms. Um, I mean, you know, they've been stuck with treating symptoms, yeah. um, you know, all the time, and and, and, and just things keep recurring, um, and, and and you get tired of of, of that. 
Um, so it's and, and I think also there's just an awakening that's happening. We you want you, you don't want to just heal yourself, but you're also trying to find who you are in this process. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> and um, so um, and, and this, the, the, that's what this kind of thing does. You know, it it brings you closer to that. Who am I? And um, how, it's how am I helping myself? But how am I helping people around me? Um, what am I doing to to serve myself better, but to serve other people better? Yeah. And it's to um, heal those uh, those childhood, you know, those childhood yeah. traumas, those adult, yeah. you know, those experiences, yeah. and just trying to just to accept that those things have happened, and you know, how do we how do we manage those uh, those uh, situations going forward? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. A lot of our a lot of our issues in our adulthood is always stem from childhood somewhere along the line. We just don't realize yeah. it how, and if it's not dealt with at that point in time. It, it carries with you throughout your, your yes. life, especially into like your relationships, your, you know, your, your studies, your, or anything that you, that anything you, in your life. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And, and I think so much of, of it goes back into your childhood and it, it, it is a difficult journey. Um, and it's like, like we spoke about earlier, it's not something that's, that's going to happen, you know, um, quick fix and it's not an instant journey. Um, but it's, it's, it's taking you back to those scenarios, taking you back to where the roots lie, yeah. um, and slowly, you know, coming out of it. And yeah, I think, I think what you're doing with your kids is amazing because you're giving them the opportunity also to express themselves in that moment. And not just yeah. let it linger with them like two, three weeks later or yeah. forever. Yeah. Like they're expressing how they feel right, right, right now. And they give it, you creating a safe space for them to come to you and say, look, mom, I'm not feeling great. You know, this happened yeah. to me, that happened. They don't feel that, that fear of like, oh no, because I'm a, I'm a boy, I shouldn't have those, yes. those feelings. Yeah. It's okay yeah. to be vulnerable. It's okay to be, yeah. you know, uh, scared at times. It's okay to be fearful. Uh, it doesn't make you weak in any way. No. It just makes you a human being. Yeah. And that I think we get lost in like the the gender roles, you know, yes. that we each play. Uh, the, like a female is supposed to be a certain way, a male is supposed to be a mm-hmm. certain way, or you know, we just we're just all trying to to yeah. live in this this complex world, and we're just doing our best, I guess. Yes, you know, and I mean, like you're speaking about these gender roles. Um, we, we we sort of you know grew up with those those inconsistencies of yeah what males should do what females should do and then we've also developed these kind of wounds um, you know coming from 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 that um, we we forget about our our feminine parts we forget about our masculine parts and um, we're all made up of this masculine and feminine energies um, and so it's just honoring both those elements and both those. Um, energies within us, right. um, the masculine that's going to give us the, the the ability to drive, to do things, um, and the feminine just allowing us to be softer, to be a lot more compassionate, um, using our creativity. Yes. Whereas the masculine, you know, a, a little bit more logical, a little bit more analytical. Um, and so we need all of these elements to actually um, move on in life. But we've become so, um, you know, stuck in, in the masculine uh, because of, of the masculine world around us. Um, where everything is, you know, uh, demand based. Everything is, um, you know, logical. Everything has to be uh, analyzed. Everything has to be criticized. Um, and uh, things around us, and you know, are so fast uh, because of that. Everything has to be done now. Uh, that that's the reason why we're having burnout. That's the reason why we're having stress, depression, um, this anxiety, and high, these high levels of yeah, depression. Um, so people are just forgetting about softening into themselves, softening mm. into the 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 compassionate side, um, into their feminine side. Whether you're male or you're female, um, you forget that you have this power within you to be softer to yourself yeah, yeah, um yeah. you know uh, to be kinder to yourself yeah. and um you you can express your creativity there's nothing wrong um, in expressing yourself um yeah. so you know in, in these various ways so it's bringing that that balance of the masculine and feminine back again um and, and that's why i like to work with women as well who um, who want to to move away from this masculine world and and, and tap into the softer aspects of, of us um, because that's who we what's happened over time yeah. our mothers our grandmothers have um, you know sort of moved away from their feminine and and and, and because of of, of the, the dynamics of the world they came out with these masculine roles more right. uh, because they needed to live up to those kind of expectations of of people around them society around them. Um, so it's breaking those barriers 
and um, in accepting us for who we are and, and the role that we also have to play to be kinder to ourselves and, yeah. and to slow down. Yeah. Um, I think the most important thing for women, um, you know, and, and the message that I have for women is just slowing down and um, just listening to yourself sometimes. Yeah. Um, we are so uh, fixated on, I need to do this now, I, I have the next thing to do. Um, that we forget to just take a breather in between. Yeah. Um, things are not gonna fall apart. Um, you know, you are still holding things together, um, but you just need to slow down. Yeah, yeah. You make a very important point of of time. Uh, time, obviously, time waits for nobody. But we don't always have we don't always have to be doing something to feel yeah. fulfilled. You can be doing yeah. nothing and feel fulfilled. Yeah. You know, and that's I think where we struggle is that that balance you know or i'm just sitting on the couch but i should be doing something because if i'm not doing yeah. something I, I feel now the anxiety, then it starts to spiral then your mind starts to think okay let me go do this yeah. oh, that's outstanding let me go and do this oh you know instead of I saying okay with that too. <laughs> you yeah. know sometimes you, you want to just sit on the couch and you think okay but i'm feeling guilty for just doing nothing um and so i had to also keep reminding myself that you know what it's okay some days to just do nothing um, I mean, even when I would go for for my daily walks, I would be literally, you know, zooming. I would be fast. I would, mm. uh, you know, really be walking fast. And I think to myself, but what am I trying what to I do? Doing? Why yeah. am I doing it? Um, and I've really, like, you know, had to slow down um, because I realized if I'm not slowing my body down, I'm not slowing my mind down, right. I'm not slowing my digestion down. Um, and all of these are all connected. Um, so, you know, there's this, this, this fast energy, this yeah. fire energy that's happening around me, this pitta that's really, 100%. you know, going crazy. Um, so it's really then I've had to tell myself, you need to slow down. Yes. Um, so it's, it's just so important. Yeah. Yeah. We said slowing down, just then bring everything, everything back into alignment. Uh, you feel that you feel better. You, you look better. You know, you, you, even just your skin starts to like. You know rejuvenate and you start looking after yourself better you know and it's just you're not just looking after yourself like if you have a family dependent on mm. you then you are there at least for them in that in that yeah. way that they actually need you to be because i think if you like so manic and panic then yeah you know they're going to feel that energy from you yeah. and they're going to be like okay mom what's happening you know or yeah. dad, dad what's yeah. happening and and then because you want to create a, a safe space for them to like actually you know, grow and, yeah. and and learn and continue their journey because they also on their own path. I mean, their own journeys. They yes. experiencing new things every single day. They are learning about their bodies, their yeah. their peers. Their peers are going through something. You know, um, and I think this practice, what these kind of practices or these kind of chats help. I think just bring awareness to like we need to firstly take care of ourselves, and then mm -hmm. we can take care of others. Because if we don't look after ourselves, we cannot we cannot take care of others. You can't, you can't absolutely you can't. You know what? If you if you're not nourished um, from the inside out, um, there's really just that much of space that you have to offer um, the next person, um, whether it's in your workplace, whether it's in your family. Um, so it's just so important that we begin to take care of ourselves, body, mind, and soul. Um, so that you can serve other people better and yeah. serving other people better I don't mean in a way that you, you're a healer no, or you, yeah. you know, something but in your daily functions of exactly. life yeah and not feel guilty about it yes you shouldn't feel yeah. guilty about you know self-love uh, self -care. Yeah. it's it's not a guilty uh, practice it's actually a very important one yes and it's something that has to be like like punched into society that it's not something that it's you, you are you're not being selfish yeah you know yeah. i if i can give my best version of myself to you that's do you want 50 percent of me or do you want 100 percent of me uh, yeah i'm saying which yeah. one would you prefer i'd rather give I mean, you 100, yeah. i'd rather give you 100 percent of me you know yeah and that's the same applies to the workspace you know um if you can show up 100 percent of yourself you're going to give 100 percent back yeah, exactly uh, so yeah so in terms of like resourcing, you know, if people want to like start listeners who want to start reading or start, you know, just getting a gauge of what Ayurvedic practices are. Do you have any suggestions? I know you have your website, which I'll put in the link in the description below. I'll share that with, uh, with uh, the community. But is there any other resources that you can, uh, you know, make us aware of? 
Um, so, you know, if you if, if someone really just wants to start from a beginner level, trying to understand Ayurveda, trying to understand how they can help themselves yeah. from a basic function of, um, you know, nutrition and, um, you know, breath work movement kind of uh, space. Um, there's, there's a really good book by um, Dr. Vasant Lad, um, which is Ayurveda for Self-Healing. Um, and, and, and there's some really good books by him as well, um, even, you know, Deepak Chopra, um, so and, and then there's a vast amount of, of, of information that's available um, online and um, right. you know that, that sort of thing so this this is just a lot of information it's just about um, trying to obviously understand from what what it is that you uh, can can take in and, 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 and put what's put relevant for you so use yeah, yeah what's practical. relevant for you yeah okay yeah all right Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, and in, in terms of resources, like uh, you know, what, what I would really recommend, if even if someone doesn't want to go and and, and you know read about it, and you right. know, if you don't have the time to to to, to read, um, you know, just doing incorporating really simple practices into their daily life um, is is uh, we spoke about waking up early. Um, the second thing is you know making sure that you have bowel movements daily. Um, having bowel movements daily is just so important right. because that then leads to obviously. Yeah, illnesses, um, and uh, so so doing so a little bit of tongue scraping, oil pulling in the morning. Um, not, but what I would also suggest is breath work, your movement, whether it's exercise, yoga, walking, um, that kind of thing. And then um, the one thing I often find people doing, and, and, and it's kind of a a thing that shouldn't be done is eating um, fruits in the morning, like uh, up until ten o'clock. Um, and you know, we spoke about um, the, the in a type of energy in, right. in different times of the day. Um, and so, it's it really works on our digestion. It, everything right. works, you know, around our digestion. Um, so, having fruits is really just um, gonna sort of dampen the digestive fire, dampen your agni um, in the morning. So, oh, it's ideally. Yeah, so it's ideally best to to have them, um, you know, after ten o'clock in the morning. Um, oh. Like I said, I always the thought it was like, you know, you have your fruits and you know your 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 fruits in the morning or you're like yeah your yeah. Then that, that's some kind of the mistakes. Like, yeah, yeah. So I mean, if, if you look at um, the time of the day, like like I said, you know, from six to ten in the morning, this is really this heaviness around, you know, in the in the air. Right. We're, we're we're with a lot of um, earth and, and water elements, right. and um, so when you look at um, fruits, they also just this really heaviness, coldness around them, and earth and water it is really cold and heavy. So and I that we want to create a balance, so we want to have the opposite of of, of that. Oh, okay. um, so you know that's what's happening in our digestion at that time of the morning. This it's really still starting up. Um, you know our di our digestive fire is not at its peak. Um, it's so it's, it really can't process a lot of stuff in the morning that's cold, um, that's damp, um, and so that's what fruits are. You know fruits are that kind of element. Um, so we rather want to have fruits a little bit later, when ten o'clock, when the sun is starting to come out. So our digestion is improving, our digestive fire is improving. Yeah, I struggle with. So my, we're able. To I think I, I struggle with my bowels in the morning. I think, I yeah. think for so long, like obviously growing up playing sport and those kind of things, we needed the nutrients and we needed the yes. energies and stuff. And I still struggle, like till today, with like you know my bowel moments in the morning. Some days yeah. it's better than others, but I think you make a very important point though. Of something I learned today about about fruits yeah, and you know yeah. the the coldness and the dampness in your in your gut. But yeah. so thank you for sharing that. I appreciate. And that. I mean another thing also is 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 not having a lot of cold, um, like having ice. People are so generally it's used to having ice and iced water, water. and that sort of thing. Um, but rather having it either lukewarm or warm, um, you know, at, at that temperature because you really want to keep that that warmness within you. Right. Um, you don't want to you know kill the, the the warmth inside of your system. I mean, on really hot days, yeah, you know, you can um, have a little bit of, of coldness, but um, most of the time, generally, you want to have a lukewarm to warm water um, in, in, in between your bottles of water. Can you, can you like, incorporate, like, uh, acidity into that, like lemon or honey or something? You know what, it, again, it really just depends on, okay. on your, 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 your state okay. of being and the, the imbalances that, that you have. Right. Um, so it's really just kind of specific to that. Um, just like yeah. trial, and, trial and error basically 
kind of like uh, so can... understanding where you are okay. um like with what's your imbalances whether you're vata pitta you know where is where your imbalances lie okay. um then that would obviously help to understand what you need inside um the water so okay. yeah i mean i don't want to say now because then you know somebody might say okay uh, let me go and have a little bit of feminine whatever into my water and it might not be good for them maybe good okay. for you but not for them Okay. Um, so each one of us is just really so different, and yeah. at that time of our life, we we also different. We just need to listen to our bodies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and you know what? Waking up in the morning can only happen also if you sleep early. So <laughs> yeah. um, getting to bed is is also another thing um, that that we we encourage in Ayurveda as well. Okay, okay. So what time is like the uh, so an acceptable think, yeah, acceptable time to go back to bed. I mean, ideally, I would say you know someone that, that really likes to sleep late. Nine thirty would be nine thirty is nine thirty to ten would obviously be an okay. ideal time. Um, but yeah, getting to bed by nine is is is, is obviously a good time. Nine nine thirty. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Some of us, I think, because you have that like certain things in life going on, you don't get to bed like at, yes. know, week, weekends come also. You're like, okay, I'll go a bit longer because I don't have that. Extra, yeah, yeah. You know, thoughts of of work or that you know yeah, I don't have yeah. any any productivity I need to do. I have yeah just general responsibilities, but I don't need to yeah. like, wake up and like go through my. But I think you like you said it's it's important to sleep is very important. Like mm-hmm. we're learning as we go along. Yeah. I, I'm learning as I go along. The sleep is very important. Whereas before yeah. in SA, I think before moving to Canada, I, I used to sleep at about ten 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 thirty. Oh, when the football is on, like the late, mm. and I wake my, I yeah. wake up at about four thirty, uh, and I go to gym because I used to start yeah. my day really early, and I wasn't getting the enough, you know, the the amount of sleep that I needed. Um, whereas now in Canada, I because my my day starts a bit later, I can I have that full I can get the full six to eight hours, yeah, and yeah. still wake up and have a routine and then start my day. Yeah, even though I go along. Further in my day, so like I only I only finish work at like five thirty, six. Yeah. But I know that it's not like I'm not. I need to rush and go home and do something. Whereas I come home, my both Tejal and I, we we have our meal. We we eat supper really early. We try and do it before six thirty seven. So it gives us also time to go in for a walk, you know, or mm-hmm. just give our our bodies time to to digest that food yeah. that we've just taken in and not just going into bed. Um, yeah you know yeah. consumed with, with what we've just eaten yeah yeah i mean that's another point you know that's so important is that at least leave two to three hours um before your 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 dinner time uh, before you go to bed yes. um you know after you've eaten um so you're not going to bed on on, on a full stomach yeah i think coming to canada helped us also because we're really close to the water you know we can go in for a nice walk maybe yeah, half an hour yeah. or something come back you know get that blood flowing, get get your digestive yeah, system yeah. moving, and when you come back, you don't feel as heavy as, as yeah, you would, yeah. you know. So I think uh, we've incorporated a lot of those just just basic practices basic in practice. our life, yeah. uh, and we feel better. We look, I mean, we just we we are like in a little bit of a better space than we were, you know, say three yeah. four years ago. Uh, I'm not saying. And the so important any, is that you become aware of those things, yeah. and I think that's that, that's the message also is that um you know just becoming aware of your needs um becoming aware of how it's going to start changing your daily life yeah. um and the things around you the people around you so it's just not an impact on yourself but yeah. the, the the greater you know the greater good of other people so your family your workspace and and everything around you starts to be, you know beginning yeah. to change um once you start taking care of yourself and we needed to find what worked for us. Not everything did. We tried and something, yeah. you know, we, and we just, okay, just not working for us. Let's try something else. And yeah. we weren't, we weren't too critical of ourselves to say, okay, now this is not working. Why isn't it mm-hmm. working? We didn't look for like, we didn't overreach to, uh, to, to ask the why. We just accepted, yeah. we accepted, yeah. okay, this is not aligning to us what we want to do in life. Because we both love yeah. to travel. We love to experience life. We love food, you know, so those kind of experiences we like we like culture so we mm. try and do like different things like we try in different places to eat we try different cuisines we try different experiences and there's some days where, where i don't enjoy what Dejel does and she doesn't enjoy what i do yeah and yeah. we go our separate ways and we do what we feel like we we do what we love but we also we do things together and i think yeah. that's where we, we 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 begin to find a balance of 
who we are as people as well and how we can how we can communicate that yeah. we don't get it right all the time but we are a bit more aware of like what the other person is is feeling yeah. or, or what is their need at the point at that point just because yeah, we've included important. those basic practices like you said breath work mm. meditation uh simple things that we, we don't need uh fancy equipment for you know or we don't yeah. need a membership for we can do it in a, in the comfort of our own home but yeah. still getting that that uh that practice in yeah yeah no it's 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 really amazing what um self care can do for you um and and, and basic things you know it doesn't mean spending hours every day um you know 15 minutes in the morning um 20 minutes in the morning it's you know it's it, it just does wonders for oneself yeah and just longevity like just to give yourself the best possible uh opportunity to yeah to not you know not depend on like um external external factors to help you along in your life mm-hmm. in terms of like movement whereas i felt yeah. like a lot of our our parents and our our grandparents like they i mean you see like other other elderly people like struggling with movement just simple thing like waking mm-hmm. up in the morning and walking and mm-hmm. stuff because they also didn't take care of themselves in that way yeah because yeah. we feel now you know for us it's very important just to be able to like you know keep moving even about yeah. you know you know later years we just for myself i just want to be able to like know that i am able to you know just move yeah 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 i mean and that's that's so common i see that with so many older women um yeah nowadays that are experiencing those kind of of issues simply because they haven't taken care of themselves in in their earlier years mm. um where they're experiencing pain in their leg pain in their lower backs um you know those those kind of issues it's it's just become really really common um and like you said it's again because they haven't taken care of themselves they haven't spent enough time with movement walking uh you know simple 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 things that don't need um resources that don't need money um that can be done you know yeah for free yeah and it's important like we we project that now onto the you know like you said your kids and so they'll take mm-hmm. that into their lives and somebody else who actually is who's requiring this will say okay you know what it doesn't matter you can start you can start now now yeah. is the, i mean you don't have to be like super young to start this journey you can start there's never it's never, never, right. never too late yeah, and exactly. you know you're you never can, too old to, to 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 begin your journey exactly exactly and we just yeah. we'll never stop learning as as human yeah. beings we always yeah. want to learn something new from somebody else as well who yes. has, who has a different perspective on life and it yeah. it's good to have these kind of discussions where we sometimes we we also don't we keep it to ourselves and we don't we don't we we aren't able to like you know uh verbalize it in a way where we want to just like you know give our thoughts to somebody else mm-hmm. who's actually needing it at that point in time yeah. because my experience is my experience yours is yours mm-hmm. but i can learn something that probably you've gone through that i require at this point in time and i yeah. think with your ayurvedic practice i think you bring in the natural side of it into it and that's a good thing where we've we've got uh, we've got the earth we've got the planet you know it's yeah. a natural resource yeah. and i think ayurveda incorporates that into into our daily life where we have material things we have mm-hmm. uh you know all those kind of external uh handles that we that we rely so much on but we also need the natural part of it as well yeah 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 we we always you know that the natural parts always been the um our our grandparents our forefathers were always using nature to to help themselves and um it, it was lost along the way you know i grew up seeing my grandfather um to, you know boiling herbs boiling spices and and using that to heal himself and um i never knew that he was practicing ayurveda and uh, he's he's had books uh, on all these things obviously with rishi and gujarati and i i actually have um a lot of them with me now um so you still read it it's, I I try I try okay. <laughs> like I can okay. um, I actually try to find a way of actually putting it into English um but Google uh, translate you know, Google translate <laughs> Yeah so that 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 knowledge and um it's it's been there it was just like like lost along the way yeah. um because of modernization right um you know so yeah it's it's uh, nature has 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 wonders that it can do for us and you know using simple things in the kitchen it doesn't have to to be expensive you don't have to go in you know go out there and and, and look for it um stuff that we can 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 use um that yeah. we have yeah 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 no i think our parents also were using it also they were incorporated in the tea you know just the the cardamom stuff yeah yeah the, the 
masala spice for the tea, the, the tea leaves, exactly. you know, those kind of things. Yeah. It wasn't a fancy machine they were using, just a mm. boiling pot of water and just those ingredients going in. Yeah. And it you just get the, you know, you feel that. Yeah. And it's, it's all really, you know, um, it, it, it had a particular, they had a particular reason why they were doing it. Um, and it really comes down to, to the science of gain of Ayurveda. Um, you know, spices were added in for a particular reason right. um, in, into the tea. Um, so, so, so everything really did have a reason. It's just that it wasn't explained to us. We never understood it. Um, our parents never understood it because maybe their parents couldn't explain right. it to them right. in a way that they could understand. Um, there was obviously language barriers at the time, you know, right, right, Gujarati right. and English and, and those kind of things. Um, so they'd rather just not, not have said it. Um, <laughs> yeah. So it, that, that's how we kind of didn't learn about it. Um, and, and everything really just comes from, from, from our ancestors, from our forefathers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, it's, it's important to learn, I, to go back. Sometimes going back is important to go forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. you know, just appreciating and acknowledging what what they've done for us and you know, we are really here because of them. Yeah. Um yeah. So, so I'm trying to so my next my next my next question would be like before I end the show, I just want like what's next? What's next for you? Yeah, so um in, in terms of Ayurveda um and, and what I'm doing here, it's really just um trying to empower women. Um, and, and that's really what, what I want to do is I just see so many women who are moms, um, who live busy lives, whether they're moms or not, um, and just don't have the capacity to, to be centered, um, to be grounded in, in, and take care of themselves. Um, and so really that's, that's what, what my driving force right now is, um, you know, for, for women to know that there is a place um, that, that, that you can actually help, you know, yourself in, 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 this, in, in, in this journey of life. And um, it's, it's, it's the, your, your voice is, is, is actually heard. And um, to know that you, you're not alone in this. Many women, including myself, have been through, through those kind of challenges. Um, and and you, can, you can come out much stronger and you can, um, you know, go on with life with a lot more um, compassion, a lot more love for, for yourself, for, for your family. Um, and, and to bring this kind of knowledge towards them and to help them. And, um, and, and that's just through, through my, my consultations that I do with, uh, with, with um with people and also through um through, uh, through treatments or so physical treatments as well um and you know that's that's doing um herbal treatments using massage powders using, using medicated oils um to to help right. with certain illnesses as well yeah no thank you so much that's powerful i appreciate thank that. thank you for having me yeah. oh you're welcome um it's always a pleasure to reconnect with uh, with people that have <laughs> are just doing so much good yeah. work and it's amazing and I wish you all the best in your in your future and your you. practices and uh thank you for joining me and i hope uh you know we can touch base again soon sometime yeah. uh but no thank you so much uh truly humbled truly appreciate thank you and i think thank you for, for for you know for this platform that you've created um in in sharing the message to to other people um no, thank your, you. your journey um you know and everyone else's journey and that, that they, people are not alone on on this path Right. And um, you know that there's help, whether it's Ayurveda, whether it's in other ways. Um, but there, there is help out there for people. Um, that, you know, mental health, whether it's physical health, um, that you're not alone in, in, in this in this journey of life. No, thank yeah. you so much. I appreciate that. Okay, you thanks so much, Kishan, for having me. All right, no problem. Anytime. Until the next. Right. Take care, guys. <laughs> okay. Bye. 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 Bye.